All right, everyone. This is uh, Norval Central coming back at you with another YouTube video. And this time I'm just going to be discussing some of the scholarship numbers that we have so far. Um, we had a couple of departures coming out of the program. And right now we have about 81 scholarship players. That's something that you have to really watch out for, uh, especially with the 25 plus 7 rule. Uh, Florida State is able to get seven more transfers into the program. Uh, they got to get that number down a little bit more. And with the 81 scholarship numbers that I calculated throughout this, and we'll kind of go position by position, I did not include Antivius Woody, which is a four-star prospect that we added this past year with the uh, offensive lineman. we got to see how his academics are going so far with that. And then also Destin Hill. I kind of put a question mark next to that one. So we're kind of figuring out both of those situations, but Florida State is expecting both of those guys to come in and be able to play and enroll this summer. But – like I said, it's all a, a give or take. So I didn't want to really include those guys until it was kind of official when they were actually on campus. Um, starting off with the quarterback position, we have three scholarship quarterbacks, and I've talked about this at nauseum. This is a position where a lot of people and a lot of fans are um, really concerned by the fact that we only have three scholarship quarterbacks. You know what you have in Jordan Travis. You know the playmaking ability is there, but sometimes the intermediate passes and just his vision overall – he has to do a little bit better of a job. And also, he has to stay more healthier. I mean, there was eight games this season where he was able to play, but the other four were just, you know, he was out for certain contests and uh, he didn't really play in that Jacksonville State game. So there was a lot of moments where it could be different. I mean, he, he didn't play because in the NC State game because of the flu. There are certain just kind of freak things that are happening, but uh, behind him, you know, you're, you're kind of battling the gap between Tate Rodemaker and A.J. Duffy. And you really don't know where to go because A.J. Duffy is a true freshman. And then you also have Tate Rodemaker where sometimes the bright lights became a little bit too bright for him at times. Uh, you saw in the spring game he had a couple of moments, but the first pass in the spring game with the two-point conversion attempt was an interception. So you have to really monitor both of those things. And I wouldn't really say that it's, it's necessary to get a transfer quarterback unless you know it's a surefire starter over Jordan Travis. Um, I mean, if you want to get another number, I don't really see the staff really possessing another guy just because it's just, you know, four scholarship quarterbacks. I just don't know. I, I think it has to be an immediate upgrade over Tate Rodemaker, but you also have to make sure that that quarterback is okay with being able to compete at a high level. And Jordan Travis is an all-time confidence high right now, especially with being that guy and having that much trust in him. And Alex Atkins and Coach Norvella both kind of express those interests in that. So we'll definitely see how it plays out. Right now, I, I think that that's kind of at the back burner and what Florida State needs to do in the transfer portal. But we'll definitely see. Well, let's go ahead and go over to the running backs. There's five running backs on the roster, and DJ Williams, Trey Sean Ward, Lawrence Trofilly, Trey Benson, and also Rodney Hill. Now, this is an interesting group because this is Jay Sean Corbin. You know, he's leaving for the NFL draft. He's actually going to be drafting on Thursday, I'd say about a mid-round pick. But it's just a moment where Florida State has to do a better job in being able to really get those guys in. And they brought in a guy like Trey Benson who had the injury issues, and a lot of people were skeptical on him. I wasn't. I was actually one of those guys that really thought that Trey Benson would be that guy to step up as that one-two punch with uh, Treshawn Ward. And so far, that has been able to be the case. I mean, during the spring game, he was able to get those 77 yards. He was fighting over tackles and being very elusive. He showed no knee brace. It was just a lot of great things that you saw from that. Now, it is a spring game, so you have to kind of take a lot of things with a grain of salt because that isn't the end-all, be-all of everything. I, I'm not one to uh, sit there and monitor a two-second clip that uh, is a practice clip. So you want to see more production out of him. You want to see more out of uh, Treshawn Ward as well because later on in the season, he only had 75 yards in the last five games. So you want to see more improvement out of him. Then you got a guy like Lawrence to Philly that's more of that scat back out of the backfield. You know, he really showed, showcased his skill against Clemson, but then he really didn't do much out of the backfield against a, a Jacksonville State. Um, so you want to see more out of that. DJ Williams only had one meaningful game against UMass, and he played pretty well, but it's UMass. So you want to see more out of him, maybe as a third down back, goal line back, whatever the case is. And then you also got a guy like Rodney Hill that they're super high on, especially coming out of um, Georgia. And I think that that could be a situation where I wouldn't say that he's going to start right away, but it could be a situation where he's brought in sometimes to kind of spell someone at times because you do have that uh, four-game redshirt rule. Then you also got a guy like C.J. Campbell that's actually not a scholarship player, but he is a walk-on player. So that is something to monitor as well. I don't really see C.J. Campbell – producing at a high level this season, but I do think that he will be able to be on special teams, be a big contributor there, show his worth, and then be able to kind of jump into that role um, as maybe a, a 
second or third string running back. Um, at the wide receiver position, um, Florida State has 11 of them. So there is some depth there at times, but there's still going to be some work. Um, you know, you got a guy like Ontario Wilson and Keyshawn Helton that are both veterans. You turn around and have Winston Wright. Um, he had that tragic car accident, and you're trying to get see where he is on, on his health meter, so you're wanting to see more out of him. Micah Pittman, who really showed well in his spring game and has really been a great, great acquisition so far because – you're able to put him at the slot. You're able to put him in the uh, outside and even in the backfield sometimes. I mean, you put him anywhere. You even saw where they were kind of utilizing him in the slot and being able to motion him over in kind of a jet sweep kind of situation. So that was really good there. Kentrod Portier and Darian Williamson, you really don't know what you have so far in those guys. They're kind of boom or bust. You're, you're trying to figure out more ways to get them involved more often. Chicago Douglas has been a, a pleasant surprise for this staff so far to be able to kind of a, emerge as that slot receiver while Winston Wright Jr. is still kind of fighting through everything. Uh, Johnny Wilson, he's been very inconsistent, uh, drop passes, but he's also shown some really flashes where he's been able to go up and contest for those 50-50 catches that Florida State really needs. Um, then you got a guy like Malik McClain, who I think has been kind of an unforgotten piece, but – he really has to develop his game at a high level. And the one biggest thing from him last season starting as a true freshman was his route running. So you're wanting to see more out of that. Deuce Spann is another guy. He's more of a developmental project right now because he did convert over from quarterback to wide receiver. That is something to watch out for there. And Joshua Burrell, he kind of fought through that injury last year, and he may even be a candidate to convert to tight end, just, just like uh, Johnny Wilson because of their stature and their frame. But overall, I think that Florida State could be in the play for one wide receiver, maybe even two. I mean, that that's kind of where they are right now. I mean, that's uh, just kind of what Coach Norvell wants to do in, in this offense is he wants to get as many playmakers as he can. And I think that's a very, very smart uh, kind of obstacle that he's got to go through. But I definitely think that that room probably needs another body to be able to go in there and not just somebody that just is going to be a depth piece. No, you want a guaranteed starter. I mean – uh, the Winston Wright injury really hurt, and you're hoping that they can kind of bounce back from that. Then you go over to the tight end position. They've had a couple of uh, uh, departures, I guess you could say, with Kobe Gross um, leaving out of the, out of the uh, program, and he's off the roster trying to figure out a new home. Um, and then you got Cam McDonald, basically, as the redshirt senior. you got White Rector, who's a really good blocking specialist. Marquise and Douglas is another guy. Jackson West, um, Jarrell Powers, Brian Courtney. And then you also got a guy like Preston Daniel, who's actually a walk-on, um, could be getting a scholarship. Who knows? Um, I believe he's on scholarship for this semester for academics, but we'll definitely see how that goes. But just like the wide receiver position, this is even more uh, of a position of need for Florida State, especially in a Mike Norvell offense, because the tight end position is so important. I know a lot of people kind of roll their eyes and say, well, we've got so many tight ends as it is. They all have similar skill sets and everything like that. But definitely you have to find that number two tight end behind Cam McDonald. I think White Rector could be that guy. You could also got to look at a guy like Jackson West or Marquise and Douglas. I don't really know what to expect much from Brian Courtney, who's kind of playing a newer position at tight end. And then you also got a guy like Jarrell Powers, who I think is more of a flex wide receiver and still kind of learning the position. With him also being able to be in a summer enrollee, um, Preston Daniel may be a blocking specialist in the goal line. It, it just – it's a lot of different question marks. They have to kind of figure out what you want to do. And right now, I think Florida State's kind of at a standstill. And if a tight end, an elite tight end comes to the picture, I think you definitely kind of explore that idea. But then you go over to the offensive line, and this is something I haven't seen Florida State do in quite some time, and that's 17 scholarship offensive linemen. You got Dylan Gibbons, Caden Lyles, Les Harris, uh, Darius Washington, Maurice Smith, Thomas Schrader, uh, Zane Herring, Lloyd Willis, Robert Scott, Rod Orr, Bryson Estes, um, Julian Armella, Jalen Early, Quayshon Sapp, uh, Dawson Richardson, and also Kaniah Charlson. And the biggest thing for me is that you've got to find those eight guys that you really, really like. Right now, I think they have Dylan Gibbons at guard. I think they have Caden Wiles at center of guard. I don't know if he's going to start quite yet, but that is an option that you can have. He's a little bit more slower on his feet. you got Bless Harris that I think is going to be an effective piece. You got Darius Washington once he comes back from his injury, his lower body injury that he suffered. And you also got a guy like Maurice Smith. I think that's five. And then you also got as well with Robert Scott. Uh, Robert Scott's probably going to – well, is going to be your starting tackle as of right now. You also got um, a guy like Dylan Gibbons. I think it's going to be your definite starter there. Wes Harris is probably going to be one of those starters, probably at the tackle position more than likely. Darius Washington's going to be your guard uh, there on the right side. 
and then you're trying to have a center competition between Lyles and also Smith. Um, Smith is a little bit undersized, so that's the one concern that you're going to have. And you're trying to find two more guys. Uh, Thomas Schrader's kind of went through his injury last season. You don't know what to really expect with him. He's kind of getting back in the fold of things. I've heard good things, but like I said, he's coming off injury, so you have to kind of play it ear by ear there. Um, Zane Herring has been kind of inconsistent. You want to see more out of him. Uh, Rod Orr has kind of been a developmental project. You want to see more out of him. Boyd Willis, the same thing. I mean, six, seven, 300 pounds, and you got to figure out different ways to be successful. Brian, uh, Bryson Estes is a guy that I really like, but he's got to get more consistent. He's got to get more um, snaps and uh, meaningful reps. Uh, Julian Armella coming into the summer, maybe. Uh, Jalen Early, same thing, coming into the summer. He's going to be more of an interior guy instead of a tackle. Quayshon Sapp can play both center and guard and right tackle. Could be a situation there, but he's also enrolling during the summer. And then you got a guy like Daltry Richardson that I think could be a successful piece of tackle, but we'll definitely see. And Kanaya Charleston, I think, could be a really, really good piece. Uh, he's got to get that weight down because he was at 350. I believe he's down to like 340 now. If he can get down to 330, I think that could be a very, very successful piece for him. But Florida State does have options. Like I said, I mean, that's – that's 11 offensive linemen that you have to kind of figure into and somehow get, you know, you know, two of those guys in there to be the rotation um, because you already have your six and out of those 11, you, you got to find two. If you can't find two out of 11, I, I really don't know uh, with the depth of that room, how much it could be even better. Cause I think Florida State set itself really up really nice with that. And uh, Alex Atkins has done a tremendous job with that. Um, turning over to the defensive line, uh, specifically the defensive ends, um, they have 10 on the roster. So you have Leonard Warner that feels like it's been here forever. Uh, Dennis Briggs is coming off an injury. Derek McClendon, who's really showcased his skills in, in uh, spring so far. T.J. Davis, not really sure what they're going to utilize for him just yet. Jared Burst is the defensive end from Albany that everyone is going to be talking about this offseason. Uh, Patrick Payton has been a guy that has, ever since he increased his size to about 245, 250, he has been a force to be reckoned with. I can't really say much about George Wilson because his skill set and his frame has still got to get up. He's still got to bulk up a little bit more. But Brian Turner is also another one that you can think of. Uh, Byron Turner has been a great uh, piece so far before he got hurt last season. You want to see more out of him, just like Thomas Schrader. Uh, Sean Barry Jackson, you want to see more out of him. We'll definitely see if we'll be able to do that. And then Aaron Hester, which is an underrated prospect from this past recruiting cycle, and there are some pieces there at the defense bench spot. I mean, there are a lot of pieces. I mean, even Dennis Briggs, I think, could slide inside and out. Um, T.J. Davis could be another guy that slide inside or out. And then, you know, Byron Turner could be another one. And then Sean Bray Jackson could slide inside or out. They're trying to go more of the defensive tackle, defensive end type hybrid with him. Um, but right now, I think you're, you're two that you really have to worry about so far. I think it's going to be a big competition would be Derek McClendon and Dennis Briggs. I think at that Fox position. I think that's going to be a big thing for them and a development they're going to have to figure out. Jared Verse is still kind of getting into things, so I'm hoping that he can be able to start on that other side with Patrick Payton kind of coming along. I think those four guys can really be a big key for them. Um, and you want to see, like I said, more out of those other guys. But I think those four are your really, really good pieces there, and I think the one-two punch of both of those sides would be really good. Then you go over to the defensive tackle position. It's a little bit smaller of a group, but I do think that this is one of your most talented positions on the team because of the just the quality of, of the players that you have on the roster so far. Um, you got Robert Cooper, which is huge that he returned for this season. Jared Jackson, Fabian Lovett, um, Malcolm Ray, uh, Joshua Farmer, Daniel Lyons, and also Bishop Thomas. And the biggest thing with me is, is behind Fabian Lovett and Robert Cooper, you have a guy like Jared Jackson. If I think it's going to be an X factor, like Mike Norvell had stated before, Malcolm Ray is another guy I think that's going to be really big for Florida State going forward there. And then you got a guy like Joshua Farmer who could be special. He's got to get his um, – he's already got his weight up. So the biggest thing for him is just getting all those snaps and meaningful reps and actually putting it all together. Now, speaking of putting it all together, I don't know if he's going to play much this season, but Daniel Lyons could be a guy that, you know, Odell has glowed about. And, I mean, when Odell glows about somebody, it means that you are really, really good playmaker. I mean, that, that kid is something else. And then Bishop Thomas is a guy that had come back and, and he had come off of, of his uh, senior season at high school and he was really trying to find his way with certain things. And 
Now he enrolled at Florida State, and now you 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 were thinking that it could be Russ coming off of that, but no, he is he has been pretty good so far, and I think those seven scholarship defensive tackles could really really be beneficial. Now, if a couple of them go down, that's where your problem is going to probably lie at. But I think this is most uh, skilled position on the team. Then you go over to the linebackers. Uh, we have seven scholarship linebackers so far, and Amari Gaynor, Kalen DeLoach, Brendan Gant, Tatum Bethune, uh, Stephen Dix, DJ Lundy, and Omar Graham Jr. Um, really, when you're looking at this room, because Florida State usually runs like a 4-2-5 mostly, so you're going to see most of the time it's going to be Tatum Bethune, and it's also going to be Kalen DeLoach. Um, you're going to see a little bit of Lundy, but the problem is with him, as we also alluded to with uh, Stephen Dix Jr., there's going to be a problem where they have a difficulty covering in space. They're good run thumpers, but when it comes down to it about covering in space, they're going to be a little bit of a problem. And you even saw that last year with Amari Gaynor because he was asked to do so much responsibility-wise that it just kind of took away from his natural skill set as a linebacker. We'll see what happens with Brendan Gann. I'm not really sure. I think they're just trying to stick that situation there and see if it sticks to anything or amounts to anything. And maybe they hit a, hit a diamond in the rough, but – um, Omar Graham Jr. is somebody that I really think is going to be special as a true freshman. I don't think he's going to play a ton, so he may play one or two games just to get the fields in. Uh, would be probably playing against Duquesne, and then we'll see what the rest of the season kind of entails. But overall, I think those seven linebackers are really, really good, and I think Florida State has a chance to have the best linebacker core that they've had since 2014 in those linebackers just because of the sheer depth of the position itself because those starters are really good. I mean, Tatum Bethune had 108 total tackles last season with UCF. And then you also look at a guy like Kalen DeLoach, who had 69 total tackles last season and really come on strong last season, specifically against Boston College. And I think there are a lot of good pieces in this linebacker room, but they have to piece it together. Like I said about uh, Stephen Dix Jr. and also DJ Lundy, I think those are two guys that are going to have to step up this season for Florida State's linebackers to really, really blossom this season. Then you go over to the safety position, and Jamie Robinson was your, your first overall ace, all-ACC uh, safety last season. Jaquel is McClellan, and then you also had Akeem Dent, who really, really flashed in his last three games. I think that was really beneficial for him going forward. Sidney Williams was a guy that flashed at times, but he, he kind of looked a little bit lost at times as well. Uh, Shaheen Brown actually showed a lot of uh, promise in the spring, but he's got to get everything mounted to and uh, get everything back into place. But overall, those five safeties are really, really good. I think that that's a solid foundation that you can have off of those five safeties. You can move them around to nickel corner, to field corner, whatever you want to do. I mean, there's a lot of good pieces there, and I think the secondary is in good hands with the safeties. Then you go over to the cornerback position. You have Jerry and Jones, Renato Green, Demory Tate, uh, Kevin Knowles, Amarian Cooper, Travis J, Greedy Vance, Azaria Thomas, and also uh, Sam McCall. I think those nine quarterbacks, cornerbacks are good, but I don't know if you have an – uh, basically a certified number one cornerback. I mean, you got Jerry and Jones, who's a good depth piece. You got Renato Green that I think is going to be a starter this season at one of the cornerback spots. You got Demory Tate that's shown flashes at times, but he really hasn't pieced it all together. He had that academic season where he had to sit out, and now he's trying to get acclimated to everything. He got a little bit hurt one year. So there's just a lot of things that he's got to get improved on, and this is his third year. So we'll definitely see how that plays out. And then you got a guy like Kevin Knowles, who I think is going to be a good nickel for you. you got a Marion Cooper that's played tremendously well. I think that's probably going to be your number one corner, per se. I don't know if he's quite ready to be that elite corner just yet, but I do think a guy like Azaria Thomas has the potential to be that guy. And I also think Sam McCall could also be that guy as well. I don't know if I'd rather him be at safety or at corner, but they're trying him out at corner, so we'll definitely see with that. And then Greedy Vance is a guy that I think is very, very versatile. You can play him in the nickel. And they're also playing him a little bit on the outside to see what you got because Jarvis Brownlee had actually transferred over to uh, Louisville. So that depth has got to be filled, and that position has got to be also filled. So overall, I think the quarterback room, our quarterback room is okay. I just don't know what you're going to expect from some of those corners because they really haven't showcased most of their skills just yet. Uh, Travis Shea is a guy that I really like at the cornerback position but I'd rather see him at safety. Um, I think he's one of the most athletic players on the team, but you just have to figure out a space for him. And I, I don't see the, the situation of him being a, a wide receiver. I just don't think he has quite enough hands. I, I get the, the athletic ability. I, I know you want to put your athletes where, wherever and just let them go to work. 
but I just think it's a little bit more worrisome for that uh, just in terms of switching his position again. I would definitely think that it could be a situation like Renato Green this season where he's turning back to corner after being moved from safety. Maybe Travis Shea actually needs to go back to safety to kind of figure out everything, survey the field a little bit more, and take the pressure off of himself. Overall, though, I, I think you got uh, 14 defensive backs with five safeties and nine cornerbacks. But surely they're going to find three great cornerbacks, I think, in, in – Basically, I, I'm going to say that the three starting cornerbacks are going to be a Marion Cooper, uh, Kevin Knowles, and Renato Green. And I think those um, three are going to be there. Then I also have Azaria Thomas, who I think is going to play a ton. He might even start over Renato Green, but I'm just going to piece uh, Renato Green just ahead of him. I think Greedy Vance is going to be another guy that's going to be having a big, big playing time there. And Sam McCall, I think, is going to play – uh, and also Jerry and Jones, I think, could play a little bit as well. I know that Florida State fans really don't want to hear that because of its inconsistencies at times, but I do think that there are about six or seven guys on that rotation that are probably going to play pretty pretty decent amount. And you're just trying to figure out what you got in most of those guys. And I hope Travis Shea can even crack the rotation. Maybe he goes back to safety. Maybe he even plays at corner and, and effectively plays well. But the problem with Travis Shea last year was he didn't really turn his eyes around. Um, and then you've got the special teams with Ryan Fitzgerald and Alex Mastromano. And really, when you're looking back at who they really probably need for transfer-wise, because with the 7 plus, um, 25 plus 7 rule, um, they currently have, you know, 81 scholarship players. Um, you know, they're able to get four more scholarships to be able to fulfill that 85 scholarship role. Now, there will be a couple more guys that transfer out of the program before May the 1st because that's when you have to enter the transfer portal to be able to play next season and not have a penalty. Um, really, quarterback's not really necessarily need right now. Running back, I don't really think it's a necessary need either. They may even convert C.J. Campbell to a scholarship running back later on. Uh, wide receiver, I do think that there is going to be a wide receiver added. Elite tight end, if, if it come be – um, I think on the offensive tackle and interior offensive lineman, um, with not getting a Marius Mims, I think that, that basically sets yourself back because you only have six that you feel super comfortable about. I think you probably add two more to see what you got in that room. Then you go over to the defensive end room. If you want to add one more skilled defensive end slash defensive tackle, I would add it. I would think that you would add at least one more guy that can play both uh, versatile in both positions. Linebacker, I definitely would probably – look and entertain the idea of that um, just to have some more depth of the position so you're not guaranteeing and, and banking on DJ Lundy and Stephen Dix to be able to cover so much in space. Uh, safety position, don't really think so, but I do think that at the cornerback position, with having that certified number one cornerback, if it comes available, I think you could be able to go and attack that as well. Um, it all depends on, though, like I said, with the wide receiver position, Winston Wright Jr., if he is able to come back and be healthy. But, I mean, he is going to be rehabbing this summer, so you want to see how effective he will be. Uh, we don't know the timetables for it. We don't really know how serious it's going to be. And I'm hoping that Destin Hill and Antavius Woody can come to the program so that way we can get more depth at those positions as well. But we'll definitely see. I think it's going to be an exciting time for Florida State, especially the, the next couple of weeks, specifically the next week, to see who enters the portal. Uh, there's going to be some more departures from Florida State, specifically probably two or three more. And uh, we'll definitely see where that all ends up. But uh, enough for me just talking and rambling on through the scholarship and uh, roster depth right now that we have. I really appreciate everyone watching the video. And if you made it this far, please subscribe to the channel and like the video, comment your thoughts. Just let me know everything because I, I want to get your thought process on everything. And I always love doing these videos to give more in, additional insight to everything that's going on. And I really do appreciate all the love and the support. And as always, go Knowles.